So yeah, influencers, it's a funny, it's a funny, it's not a media term per se that we would use sort of in the broader world of advertising and marketing. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that was given to me as a target when I arrived at Dana-Farber about three years ago, and it's really a PR target. And so to understand who these people are, there was some research that had been done, a really good piece of research that identified these people as uh, national oncologists, other researchers at other institutions, potential staff and faculty, people who write grants, people in industry who might want to partner with us, um, all these kinds of partnerships and so forth. And it came under this category of influencers. And so we did have to do a lot of work to understand who are these people and how can we reach them in media. And so we had to translate that into a media target because obviously you can't get Simmons research on you know, or MRI, MRI research uh, on right. uh, influencers per mm -hmm. se. And, um, and so we do quantitative studies to see what our impact is. But what's really most interesting to me is the qualitative research that we do, because it's hard to get a quant study with these influencers. You know, there aren't tons of them. So mm -hmm. um, we do this uh, qualitative research uh, periodically and have the one-to-one -one discussions and see how things are shifting and what they're hearing and so forth. And that's really the most insightful, I think, for us and in understanding influencers and what's important to them and what they're hearing or, or understanding about Dana-Farber. Mm -hmm. Can I ask what the qualitative research is telling you at this point? Yeah, it's telling us that we that they're surprised that an institution, they've always thought of Dana-Farber as prestigious. So when we say who are the top cancer centers in the country? They'll say Memorial Sloan Kettering and MD Anderson, Mayo. And we say, well, what about Dana-Farber? And they say, oh my God, yes, of course, Dana-Farber. So we're not top of mind. And then when we say, well, what do you know about Dana-Farber? They say, well, Dana-Farber is very prestigious. Okay, great. Well, do you know anything specific about Dana-Farber? No, not really. They're in Boston. So, oh, maybe they're you know, associated with Harvard, something like that. Right. So when we then expose concepts to them of these discover of the discovery that's happening and the basic science and then the the discovery the use the um, using clinical trials and all this and we start to layer on how things evolve so there may be a basic science uh, like Dr. Kalen um, as research he won the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago and he learned how um, oxygen. Uh, how cells respond to oxygen. So that's basic science. Then he turned, that turned into um, use in not only in cancer, but now because of his evolving research. So it's this layered effect, if you will, and now impacts different types of cancer, anemia, um, macular degeneration, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So because of this basic science. And so the influencers like to hear that layered story and that the research continues. So we learn one thing and then we continue and we add to it and are in constant pursuit of broadening, um, broadening the uh, focus, if you will, mm -hmm. and the impact.